Hello everyone, this is Dr. Murli Mohan. So I am here to teach you asymmetric synthesis. So in this lecture, I am going to discuss about brief introduction about asymmetric synthesis, definition of asymmetric synthesis, importance of asymmetric synthesis, classification and substrate controlled asymmetric synthesis. These contents I am going to discuss in this lecture. First of all, introduction. So what is asymmetric synthesis? Any reaction any reaction which is able to produce unequal ratio of chiral stereoisomers in which one of the starting materials must be chiral. So that reaction is said to be asymmetric synthesis. See, this reaction, for example, if you consider this reaction, there are starting materials that means substrate, reagent and catalyst. When they treat with each other and they produce a new product, they are called end products. These end products, if they are chiral stereoisomers, that means C plus D, if one of the products, one of the isomer is made, then this reaction is said to be asymmetric synthesis. But in this condition, one of the substrates should be chiral, either substrate or reagent or catalyst. Any one of the starting materials should be chi chiral, then this reaction produces unequal ratio of chiral stereos. Then only this reaction is called asymmetric synthesis. Suppose the same reaction in which the starting materials are not chiral any one of the starting metals are not chiral, then that reaction produces 50 is to 50 ratio of chiral stereoisomers. Then this reaction is not called asymmetric synthesis. So this asymmetric synthesis is a branch of organic chemistry which mainly deals with the production of chiral stereoisomers. For example, asymmetric reduction. Asymmetric reduction of ethyl acetoacetate, if you take this molecule, there are two different type of functional groups you can observe. One is carbonyl functional group and one more is ester functional group. Suppose if you treat this molecule with the Baker's yeast which is called a chiral enzyme, if you treat with this enzyme, this enzyme is stereoselectively attacked at this carbonyl carbon and of course it follows chemoselectivity also because it is selective for carbonyl carbon. It produces two isomers of alcohols, two stereoisomers of alcohol, one is S and one more is R. So, in which S isomer is the major one, thus then this reaction is said to be asymmetric synthesis. Whereas, the same reaction if you treat with the sodium borohydride, which is a reducing agent, of course it is also selectively reduce the carbonyl carbon or the ester carbonyl. So, it reacts with the carbonyl and produce both S and R isomers in 50 is to 50 ratio. Then that reaction is not said to be asymmetric synthesis. Go for another example, that is called Sharpless Asymmetric Epoxidation. This reaction is mainly production of uh, epoxides, chiral epoxides from the allylic alcohols. Suppose the substrate is alkene, this is not uh, a chiral one, but the reagent what we are using in this reaction is a chiral, that is called diethyl tartarate. So in this reaction we are using minus diethyl tartarate, that is why here in this reaction you are getting two epoxides, one is beta epoxide, one more is alpha epoxide, whereas beta epoxide is producing majorly in this reaction when you are using chiral agent that to, sorry, chiral reagent that to minus diethyl tartarate. So this reaction is said to be asymmetric synthesis, whereas if you use plus diethyl tartarate, this reaction produce alpha epoxide which is major, so this reaction is said to be asymmetric synthesis. Suppose if this reaction if you carried out in presence of MCPBA, MCPBA, so which is metachlorofarbenzoic acid, which is also a, an epoxidizing reagent. So, this reagent produces both alpha and beta epoxides in 50 is to 50 ratio. Then, this reaction is not said to be asymmetric synthesis. So, so far, so far we are discussing about the the what is asymmetric synthesis. So this asymmetric synthesis mainly produces chiral stereoisomers, right? So next, we are moving to importance of asymmetric synthesis. So what is importance of asymmetric synthesis? What needs to produce, that means what needs to uh, make a new branch in organic chemistry as asymmetric synthesis? As I told you, asymmetric synthesis mainly leads to the production of unequal ratio of chiral stereoisomers. That means one isomer in that reaction you are getting majorly. So 
there are two different type of financial matter zero isomers you have in a racemic mixture one isomer may have one kind of uh, biological activity one may not have that kind of biological activity for example in our nature we have different kind of molecules like amino acids sugars proteins or nucleic acids vitamins terpenes alkalis and sterols all are chiral one so they are all chiral but they exist in only one kind of chiral enantiomer so one kind of optical active form so if you want to produce opposite optically active form so you have to follow the asymmetric synthesis because this asymmetric synthesis produce two enantiomers in unequal ratio suppose if you suppose if you take amino acids this amino acid generally available in s form or l form in nature suppose if you want to synthesize r so you can go for asymmetric synthesis and produce this that is one kind of importance another one is in pharmaceutical industry that means if you take a drug called thalidomide this thalidomide drug has two different type of enantiomers one is s and one more is r thalidomide in this r thalidomide is actually acting as a sedative and a sleeping drug for pregnant women whereas s thalidomide acting that means it acts as it causes side effects that means it leads to the birth defects in newborn babies so this itself indicates the it itself gives the information about importance of asymmetric synthesis there is another molecule called limonene so this limonene also has two different type of isomers one is r and one more is s isomer this r limonene generally it gives you smell of orange whereas s limonene gives you smell of lemon see the molecule same but there is a special arrangement of atoms or groups around the carbon center is different so based on that the properties are also different to produce these kind of molecules it requires asymmetric synthesis that is the beauty of this asymmetric synthesis this alcohol already we have seen in the introduction slide this alcohol produced by baker's yeast by treating with ethyl ester state this acts as a drug or food additive and pesticides etc whereas the opposite isomer which got a minor in the reaction which has no use so this is also importance of asymmetric synthesis so there is another drug called ethambutol so in this ethambutol it has two different type of isomers one is s s and one more is r r enantiomer so in this s s ethambutol only acts as a anti tubercular agent and as opposite isomer is actually toxic it causes blindness so so this shows the importance of asymmetric synthesis based on this we want to produce only s s ethambutol in our in our laboratories so that that will be useful as anti tubercular agent so this shows the importance of asymmetric synthesis briefly next one is classification so asymmetric synthesis is classified into four different type of generations first generation second generation third and fourth generation the first generation is chiral this is called substrate controlled asymmetric synthesis second one is called axillary controlled asymmetric synthesis third one is called reagent controlled fourth one is called catalyst controlled that means these are all starting materials in the reaction so here the starting material is substrate this substrate is chiral in this chiral axillary is the chiral one in this chiral reagent in this chiral catalyst so these each reaction these starting materials are responsible for the production of chiral stereoisomer in unequal ratio whereas this fourth generation is also called as asymmetric catalysis which is further divided into biocatalysis metal catalysis and organocatalysis biocatalysis the name itself indicates that enzymes are utilizing for the production of chiral stereoisomers where we have already seen in the first slide the ethyl ester is treated with the baker's yeast which produces unequal ratio of enantiomers in metal catalyst metal catalysis generally metals are also utilizing for the production of chiral stereoisomers by complexation method and in organocatalysis sub stoichiometric amount of catalyst is sufficient which is not having any metal atom to produce chiral stereoisomers in unequal ratio so that's why this organocatalyst now become a growing area in asymmetric synthesis so in this lecture i am going to discuss about only first generation that is called substrate controlled asymmetric synthesis so this is actually substrate controlled asymmetric synthesis 
that means the starting material one of the starting material that means substrate is chiral so i told you already the natural naturally occurring molecules like alkyl alkaloids terpenoids uh, then sugars amino acids proteins all are active molecules so if you take them as a substrate they are all chiral substrates so that chiral substrate is controlling the formation of unequal ratio of uh, chiral stereoisomers in a reaction then that is called substrate control asymmetric synthesis that means here already substrate has one chiral center it produces one more chiral center in the product so that means it produces a diastereomers in unequal ratio diastereomers in unequal ratio so that's why this reaction is called diastereo selective reaction okay diastereo selective reaction for example if you take this molecule cyclopentanol this molecule has a chiral center okay this already has a chiral center so it is a chiral substrate mcpb which is a chiral one so one of the starting material is chiral here one is chiral one more is a chiral if you start a reaction it produces epoxides two different type of epoxides one is beta epoxide and one more is alpha epoxide actually the beta epoxide that means in this case if you observe the oh and epoxide both are present in the same phase same side actually it is not possible but in this case it is possible why it is not possible because the steric imbalance because of steric imbalance the interaction of this mcbba or as uh, impact system takes place from the bottom side of the alkene phase this phase so it is not possible but in this case why it is possible because there is a functional group called hydroxyl which involves in the chelation with the mcbba which is a reagent so that the chelation observed from the top side so that's why this mcbba attack from the top side so which produces beta epoxide majorly whereas alpha epoxide minor so this is actually chiral substrate control asymmetric synthesis so now we'll conclude this by comparing with the all methods so the generations called in asymmetric synthesis are methods to produce chiral stereoisomers in unequal ratio the methods are resolution chiral pool that is chiral substrate control first generation auxiliary second generation reagent third generation and catalyst fourth generation resolution means the separation of enantiomers from the mixture of that means the racemic mixture is called resolution in this case we will get 50 50 pure 50% of one enantiomer pure 50% of another enantiomer that means one enantiomer you will get 50% yield only you will get here so this is actually that disadvantages of uh, resolution and chiral pool means chiral substrate so in this only one enantiomer availability as i told you already substrate suppose amino acids are only available in one enantiomer form so if you want to generate one more enantiomer it's not possible with the substrate in auxiliary this auxiliary means it is a chiral one that is optically external uh, sorry optically active molecule which is externally we are adding into the reaction to uh, attach with the Uh, the substrate and uh, once it induces the uh, pro- formation of uh, stereo center then it uh, detaches from the substrate so detaches from the product so that is actually chiral auxiliary so in this case extra steps because the, the attachment and detachments are the two steps uh, involving in the reaction when steps are increasing the yields also decreasing so that's why this is also disadvantage of this chiral reagent so chiral reagents are okay okay in this uh, symmetric synthesis method but only few reagents are successful and often for few substrates only they are selectively for sub few substrates chiral catalyst so chiral catalyst is economical because we are using here sub stoichiometric amount and not it is not a sub stoichiometric amount it's a sub stoichiometric amount you can also recycle them recover and use them in different cycles but uh, disadvantages are only few reactions are really successful recrystallization can improve only already high octo the potential excesses so for example asymmetric hydrogenation phosphorylation dihydroxylation but this chiral catalyst is a growing area now in the asymmetric synthesis field so this is all about the asymmetric synthesis so far i have discussed about the introduction what is asymmetric synthesis and uh, uh, what uh, is the importance of asymmetric synthesis uh, in our uh, early life and the, what is the classification of asymmetric synthesis what is substrate control of asymmetric synthesis like we have the chiral auxiliary controlled chiral reagent controlled and chiral catalyst controlled asymmetric synthesis reactions thank you